Hi, this is Tim Lightfellow in the Kingdom of Ontario in the Society for Creative Anachronism. Uh, this is another video that someone suggested a topic for. Um, they asked me to do a video or suggested I do a video on scoring. In the SCA that kind of comes with a lot of caveats. Um, what I'm going to share is the scoring I'm aware of. A lot of it is based on on tiers rules. Uh, scoring is one of those things in the SCA that society tries to leave to each kingdom to decide what, how they're going to handle it. So um, again, I'm going to share what I know, but I encourage anyone to always check their local rules, check with a marshal if they have any questions. Uh, don't assume because I presented it here that it's the rules where you're at. Um, and there are some other pieces that are, uh, I'm going to touch on some like novelty shoot stuff that overlaps kind of with tournament design. But um, so as we're discussing scoring, uh, may as well include some about uh, scoring that kind of thing. So. All of that said, as far as I understand it, all the branches in the SCA for Royal Rounds use a standard 60 centimeter uh, target. They used to be referred to as FIDA targets. FIDA is no longer um, the name of the organization that's handling archery. Um, I don't recall the, the company that is now. Uh, but they're still, they're a 60 centimeter target. They're five color. Um, I have seen these targets. In fact, I bought some once where there's no center band in the colors. So it's literally just white, black, blue, red, gold without the middle dividers. For most of our kingdoms, that would be fine. Uh, my understanding is that Drakenwald uses 10 point scoring which would mean they would want the dividers because it'd be one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Whereas most of us, it's one, two, three, four, and five. That's for standard scoring. Um, the other part of that is I'll point out, you can see it most easily at the white. There's a black line at the outer ring of each color, even the black that blends into the black and the black blends into the blue there, but um, at each one, the, the scoring I'm familiar with is that if you break the line, you get the next point up. So we tend to score in the archer's favor. That can be changed with different, you know, specific tournaments, things like that. There could be rules. Uh, enacted the score against the archer to make it more challenging. But for royal rounds, for ICACs, it scores in the archer's favor. And again, this is an on tier rule that I'm familiar with. If you're not in on tier, please verify that with your local branch marshal, your kingdom marshal, whoever. Okay, there's another thing called period scoring which a lot of people are familiar with, but newer archers may not be. Here's an example of a period target. You'll notice this has lines in it so that it can actually be used to score uh, five color as well, but it can allow you to use a more period looking target like at an event and still be able to submit scores in both uh, period and open category. Uh, I notice I'm holding it upside down because if you look at it, it doesn't show very well on the camera, but the uh, scoring is actually put on each of the rings to make it easier. So for period scoring, the outside, which would be white, black, and blue on a five color is two points. The green area here, which would be red and the outer gold ring is four points. And the inner gold ring 
is eight points. So that's the period scoring. And again, if you're scoring it on a regular five color target, white, black, blue is two points, red, outer gold, four points, inner gold, eight points. As far as what counts as period gear, uh, most of that is defined in the SCA target archery rules. Um, there is, I believe, for some of the rules, there's often the opportunity for kingdoms to decide to be a little more specific. Uh, so once again, check with your regional or kingdom marshal if you have any questions about whether what your shooting counts as period gear or does not. Okay. Uh, and once again, the, the rules that I have just explained are the ones I'm familiar with for um, Ontier, West, Avakel. I think Trimeris uses the same. Um, I know that all the kingdoms, to my understanding, except Drakenwald, use one through five for op open scoring. Not sure about period scoring. Royal rounds are kingdom specific. They are typically three static ends and one 30 second timed end. Uh, the timed end is typically at the shortest distance. So for adults, we shoot 20 yards, 30 yards, 40 yards. So the timed end is at 20 yards. In Ontier, in Avacal, in Trimeris, and I believe it's West Kingdom, there are three kids categories. The youngest is 10 yards, 15 yards, 20 yards. Uh, then there's 15, 20, 30, and then there's 20, 30, 40, the same as adults, but in their own category. This aligns with the ICAC. Um, and so um, scoring's the same distances are different, but the same thing, static end six arrows each at whichever of those distances based on their age. And then their timed end is at their shortest distance. So for children, for us, it's 10 yards. For junior youth, it's 15 yards. For senior youth, it's 20 yards for their timed end. Uh, our rules are that the Royal Round can be shot in any order you want. You're not allowed to practice in anything in between. You aren't allowed ranging shots. Um, so once you start a scoring round, you shoot it all the way through. Same rules uh, apply to the ICAC. Once you start shooting the ICAC, you aren't allowed ranging shots. You aren't allowed practices. You have to shoot it for score all the way through. You can sit out an end or two. Um, I've known people who just couldn't stand up and shoot you know that many consecutive ends so they'll sit out for an end or two take a break get some hydration whatever and then but once they step back up to the line they're shooting for score right away there's not a okay practice first because you've been sitting down so um, you have to continue shooting for score or else throw out your score um, there is in the ICAC, I should specify, is the Inter-Kingdom Archery Challenge. Uh, it varies from the Royal Round in that it is essentially two Royal Rounds plus four extra timed ends. And it allows archers to compare themselves to other, king other archers in other kingdoms uh, society-wide. Whereas again, Royal Rounds, there can be differences in the rules kingdom to kingdom. So um the the scores may not be a direct comparison of one archer to another um, that actually feeds into something called the grand archery tournament so the icac allows you to qualify for a rank in the grand archery tournament and 
In addition to the ICAC, you can also shoot what they call the SSAC, the Society Seasonal Archery Challenges. Those vary, they are changed out quarterly. Um, the winter ones are usually focused at 20 yards, so anyone who's shooting indoor ranges or anything like that ho can hopefully still participate. Uh, 20 yard ones tend to focus more on changing your aim points frequently. So they might be, for instance, we had one called falling leaves. So you're literally shooting here, 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 here. Um, you know, so you, you don't get two shots in the same spot that you might, you know, figure out your aim point and help your score that way. So the challenge is adapting to what you're shooting at. Uh, most of the rest of them may be a target at a specific distance or multiple distances could be involved. Yes, I say C tends to be similar scoring uh, somehow one through five or one, three, five or three and five, um, depending on what the shoot is and what the scoring face looks like. Those rules are all specific to each shoot and they're published with uh, each shoot when the shoot is set up to become the SSAC. And that's all available to view online at scores-sca.org. And if you go there, you can you can go into each kingdom's page to see what each kingdom's doing, uh, assuming they're using the site. And you can go into the ICAC site, you can go into the SSAC site, you can go look at the Grand Archery Tournament rankings, all of it from that site. Okay. So those are the basics. And again, the caveat of make sure you check your local rules. Even as I'm saying this, I know some kingdoms have their rules being reviewed or, or modified. So what's a rule now may not be a rule in five or 10 days or a month or two months. So again, um, I'm recording this in March of 2021. So if you're watching it after March of 2021, definitely make sure to look at local rules to verify scoring has not changed. Um, I will call out one other shoot that I believe is still all managed via email and it's the Winter Gwinterian Challenge. It's all at 20 yards. The targets are one of these, which is a 40 centimeter five color target. It's a bullseye, which is similar to this. It has the white ring and then it has a gray area in the middle. And then it's a, as I recall, a wand shoot which if you're not familiar with the wand, it's literally lines straight up and down. Um, it's been a while since we've done that one, so I'm trying to recall. I believe that theirs is set up an inch or so wide, and it's three bars. So you have a center bar of one color, and then the two sides are another. And the scoring is nothing if you miss. Three points for the outer bars, five points for the inner bar for the wand. Um, three points for the white area, five points for the gray area on the bowl. And then on this target, it's one through five. And again, scoring in the archer's favor. And so that one is, if I recall the rules, it's two ends at the wand, two ends at the bowl, two static and two timed ends at the five color 40 centimeter target. Um, again, that is not an SCA official shoot. It is something that someone has chosen to run and continue running uh, for the, the fun of those who choose to participate within the SCA. Okay. On to the next thing, which is a very complicated and almost impossible to discuss, almost, uh, topic, which is novelty shoots. Novelty shoots, frankly, can be anything 
in any kingdom. Um, you, some kingdoms may have rules about not allowing specific stuff. Uh, we try to discourage any identifiable people shapes. Um, you know, if you have a generic knight, generic damsel in distress, that kind of thing for novelty, it's one thing. If you have a knight that looks like Sir So and So because people, you know, have a grudge against them or something, that's no, that's not cool. Um, so generic looking forms usually to a theme like, you know, you're you're trying to save the princess and so you have to shoot the knights and not shoot the princess. Um, you have to save the knight who's who's being held prisoner by these other two knights or there's, you know, uh, brigands who have surrounded them and you're trying to shoot them and not not the knight or the damsel or um, lots of ideas for themes there. Sometimes I've seen themes of um, we we do a, a shoot every uh, Valentine's Day. So Cupid gets the shaft. Um, so there are different kind of anti Valentine's Day themed shoots for that. So, so again, a lot of novelty shoots tend to kind of pick a theme and share it. Um, they don't have to. They can just be some random. Hey, we came up with all these cool different types of targets. Let's go shoot them. Um, as such, any kind of target that someone comes up with can be scored whatever way they choose and feel will help them distinguish a winner from the field. Um, but some of the common things and common uh, suggestions I would have is if you're doing something, uh, I'll give you an example. So here we have uh, frogs. And if you can tell, oh, possibly notice pretty quickly that smallest frogs are gold, next ones are red, next ones are blue, next ones are black. The ones that would be white because they're on white paper are green. So this is really quick and easy if, as an archer to guess, hey, this is probably scored one through five. Um, so if you're going to do a tournament where you have a lot of archers where you, or you have a lot of different novelty shoots, having something that is fairly self-explanatory scoring wise that when they walk up and look at it, uh, it, it'll be an, oh, I get it. That's right. Like that, those are gold. Those are blue. So those are three points. Those are five points um, that can help. Uh, having not having odd scores that are going to take you an extra long time to add up like again if you have let's say you're doing six ends of novelty shoots and you expect at least 10 to 20 archers and you have this target scored one through three and this one scored uh three five seven and this one scored um i don't know three five ten because there's an extra hard one to hit and then you're gonna have to sit and add all these scores up in time to present them in court or to declare a winner at the end of, if if it's been presented just right at the end of the tournament so keep in mind a little bit easier for the archers and easier for you as scorekeeper slash person running the tournament can be beneficial it's also fun to have different scores and different things to, you know, again, spread out scores, spread out results, make it a little more clear. Hey, someone was really on and hitting all the, the harder targets. Someone wasn't. But um, keeping it something where the archers aren't coming to you every end going, now what am I shooting? And now how do we score that one? Uh, you know, making it a little bit self-explanatory is going to make it easier in the long run now again one thing i'd point out is like the person running this could decide that if you break any of the line and hit the white well that wasn't a kill shot because you only nicked them so it's not going to count or they could decide that well it still means you hit it so you could score it 
So um, prime example of where a novelty shoot, the person running it can make the call about whether or not it scores. Uh, they could also decide to have one end, you know, another trick with novelty shoots sometimes is, okay, this this end we're scoring it normal, next end we're going to score it reverse, so these guys are worth the most, or next end we're going to set it up so that only the gold ones count for points, everything else is a miss. You know, there, there are lots of different op options and opportunities for making novelty shoots more or less challenging and uh, impacting the way they score. So I hope this is helpful and I thank everyone for watching. Have a good day. Remember, as I said, as I'm trying to help with introducing target types and, and uh, our standard scoring, always Always check with your local branch, local kingdom to make sure how they expect things to be scored because it could be different than what I've just presented. Thank you.